Another difficult topic for theater is the difficulty of living with chronic illness. Our guest has taken on the challenge with a bowel disorder known as Crohn's disease. The play is called 28 Feet. He's back to perform in Boston starting tomorrow night. We'd like to welcome Jonathan Mirren. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Jonathan. Thanks for having me, Chris. Uh, to start with the nitty gritty here, uh, for yeah. people who don't know what this is like, uh, what is Crohn's what disease? What is Crohn's disease? It's a good question. Um, I mean, I think at this point, a lot of people you mentioned Crohn's disease and they're like, oh yeah, my sister-in-law has that, my uncle has that. But for people who've never heard of it, it's, um, it's basically an inflammation of the intestine. It, the inflammation can actually occur anywhere between your, you know, your mouth and uh, your anus. And basically, um, that inflammation leads to all kinds of things like diarrhea, cramping, um, fatigue, like fatigue, most chronic illnesses have an element of fatigue, but... Um, but the highlights for me were sort of really can be severe cramping and, and diarrhea, and um, that's the main, now, main thing. Now, uh, what little I've heard about this has usually been with somebody who's older, but you had this, I guess, when, what, you were a little kid? Um, I was diagnosed when I was 18, which is kind of actually a classic age. Not a little kid, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, a 18 is, is a common age to be diagnosed with this particular illness, but actually, you know, there's a lot of children who are dealing with this as well. It's Crohn's disease and then it's sort of its um, twin disease, ulcerative colitis, and together they're known as inflammatory bowel disease or IBD. And um, yeah, a lot of children deal with it. I mean, it can happen at any age. A lot of people diagnosed in their sort of young, uh, young adult years. Now, this is an interesting topic because I imagine it's hard to live with, but uh, what about getting it treated medically? Yeah, well, there's a lot of different medications out there. Um, you know, I started being treated for it in 1990, and there were sort of a, you know, we tried one thing, then we tried another thing, and we tried another thing. Uh, pregnizone, for many years, was sort of the classic, and I think it still is kind of the classic kind of cure-all, like when really things are really not working, you know, people can be offered pregnizone to kind of calm. It's called a flare-up. When, you know, the nature of the disease is that you can be fine for months or even years, and all of a sudden you'll have something. We, they don't know the cause of the disease, and they also don't know you don't necessarily know the cause of it. It's called a flare-up, where all of a sudden the inflammation comes back, the symptoms come back, and it can be you know totally debilitating. It can last for you know 24 hours to you know a week, it depends. Um, now the other thing is this is not just like having a bad meal and a couple of days later you're back to normal. I mean, uh, tell me about this you know seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, well, that's it's a good question. You know, they don't know the cure. There is no cure for it. And it took me part of my journey with it is it took me about ten years. You know, 1990 I was diagnosed. Then in 1999 I had a resection, which is kind of where the title comes from. You know, the average length of the intestine is somewhere. You know, people say 25 to 30 feet. So I said, you know, mine was 29 feet, and I had one foot taken away. That's a resection where they take out one foot, and I was left with 28. Um, and it took me about that length of time to really understand the nature of chronic illness. You know, when you're told, oh, you have this disease, you think typically you go to the doctor, you, you're sick, they give you something you, you know, you expect to get better. But um, when you're chronically ill, when you have something that is intractable, uh, you don't necessarily get better. But it, I'm sort of a slow learner. It took me about nine years. And then the, the, the physician saying at the end of that, well, you know, probably it's going to come back in the same place where it was in about five years, typically. Um, and then I, that sort of woke me up like, wow, I, I have to be a little more proactive in terms of how I deal with this. I can't just, you know, go to the doctor and expect necessarily to get better. I have to, you know, look at my lifestyle, look at a lot of other things. Now, how, how do you see making this into a, a subject of performance? Uh... Yeah, well, I mean, that's my job. I'm, I'm an actor and playwright by trade. And so having gone through this experience kind of thought, well, here's an opportunity to take something which is very difficult, um, but also at times, you know, could really use a little, the light of comedy to shine, shine through. And, um, you know, there's actually, there's a, a body of research out there that shows that laughter is, has healing effects. So um, that was part of my thinking behind it. And, uh, yeah, well, maybe talk a little bit about what you're doing with this in the play, because this is not... Uh, Strictly a monologue. I guess that was an earlier stage of things, but you got more visual with this, right? Yeah, I tried to go in a more visual direction. Also, my uh, the director, my wife, is a choreographer by training, choreographer, dance, dancer, and, and it's also a, comes from a family of visual artists. And so she sort of thinks in more visual terms. And I was, after doing a, a previous one-man show about um, 
some misadventures in the stock market, which was very had some very long monologues. This is, you know, here we combine puppetry and dance and um, stand-up comedy uh, to sort of make a more a more visual piece. Also, original five original songs, which I play in guitar, sort of comic song, comic slash poignant songs. Now, this seems like a, a health condition that has plenty of opportunities for some very uh, cheap comedy, but that's yeah. also the other side of humiliation. There must have been humiliating events in your life. Um, there's definitely a, an element of humiliation. I mean, it, it's also, it's, you know, most of the time in the 90s when I was dealing with this, I mean, obviously my family knew, my close friends knew, but it's just a very, you know, because of the nature of it, it's a very private thing. Like, you know, I would, you, know, you just learn to kind of deal with the symptoms as best you can. And my, my strategy at the time was to ignore them as much as possible, um, which is maybe not the best strategy in terms of, you know, getting better. But there, there must have come some moment where you... you you confronted this more openly? Somebody, uh, your, some friend, some family member must have confronted it more openly with you and that might have changed things? Um, I mean, doing the show was really the first time that I sort of was like, well, you know, this is part of who I am and I'm going to try to make some art about it. You know, um, before that, you know, it's just, it just was me, the doctors, and my close family. I mean, my mother went through um, an intense bout of ulcerative colitis when she was in her early 20s. So she was often able to kind of, she kind of had a sense of what I was dealing with. But it's, it's you know, unless you've had chronic illness or in particular Crohn's, it's, it's kind of hard to imagine, you know. Uh, how, how, does, how does laughter heal exactly? It's a good question. I mean, I, I know there is some biology behind it that I'm not prepared to explain at the moment. But um, I mean, I think we all know that like the value of a good laugh you know, a good laugh, not necessarily a cheap laugh, um, about, you know, sort of reflecting on your experience, suddenly seeing it, you know, in a, something in a wider perspective can just really lift your mood and, and the body and the mind are very intimately connected and that's something else that I've sort of got more familiar with, you know, being an actor now for about 15 years, professional actor, so. I should mention, you, you've got some performances uh, over the next couple of weeks starting, uh, I guess this will be tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, Friday night, uh, just in time for a little snowstorm, Friday night, Saturday night, and then the following weekend, again, Friday and Saturday night at Boston Playwrights Theater down on Com Ave, 949 Com Ave. And we should mention if people would like some more information, is there some way they can uh, chase that down? Absolutely. Well, there's our website. It's uh, ptco, p like Peter, t like Tom, co.org slash solo or just ptco.org. There you can get information about the show and also buy tickets. Mm -hmm. There's also a, you know, a box office phone number, which I can give if that's yeah, helpful. Yeah, by all means. Yeah, so the box office phone number is 1-866-811-4111. All right, thank you very much for yeah. being with us in PT Theatre Company, Jonathan Mirren.